Hello everyone. I'm pleased to announce my new tour for 2024. Beginning in early February and running through June, Tammy and I and an assortment of special guests are going to visit 51 cities in the U.S. You can find out more information about this on my website, jordanbpeterson.com, as well as accessing all relevant ticketing information. I'm going to use the tour to walk through some of the ideas I've been working on in my forthcoming book out November 2024, We Who Wrestle With God. I'm looking forward to this. I'm thrilled to be able to do it again. And I'll be pleased to see all of you again soon. Bye-bye. This rise of this managerial class, you see it in the deep state and the federal government. The people who are the political consultants populating the industrialization of our political politics, who are neither ordinary citizens in their own right, nor are they actual purposeful creators, but are the intermediating managers, right? That's what's sucking the lifeblood out of our culture and our country, and I would go so far as to say the modern West as we know it. And so is it possible to reform that beast? No. I think you have to slay that beast. Hello, everybody. I'm talking again to Vivek Ramaswamy. I started talking to Vivek before he ran for president on the Republican side uh, with regard to his endeavors on the ESG alternative front in the financial domain, him fighting back against the climate apocalypse mongers in the economic realm. I've been talking to Vivek pretty regularly as he's progressed through the Republican primaries. He's dropped his striving for the presidency, but established himself quite credibly as a candidate and is still active as a political voice. Um, we do a postmortem of his adventure on the political stage, talking about the deep state, talking about his relationship with Donald Trump, talking about his plans for the future, uh, talking about the viability of Trump as a candidate, um, Trump's divisiveness, Vivek's reasons for trusting Trump and putting some faith in a future that might include a four-year Trump presidency, um, and walking through the realities of a modern-day presidential campaign. And so join us for that. Hey, Vivek, thanks for coming on again. Um, some of the people watching and listening will know that we spoke, well, before you made your bid for, for the Republican leadership in the presidential race, we got to know each other before then, and then you've been kind enough to take us along on your journey, essentially, and we haven't done that for a while. Now, I know that part of your political adventure has come to a conclusion, but I think it would be very useful for everybody who's watching and listening to start from the beginning of, of your entry into the political domain, and then just to tell everybody as clearly as you can what happened to you and what you learned, what happened to you, what you learned, and where you are now. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm still processing that. And that's why I was looking forward to this conversation because even though it's been a couple months, there's a whole ton of, you know, transitional to normal life phase of this that I haven't had my own chance to process that. And hopefully this conversation is, is part of that for me. So, you and I actually spoke before, and you were one of a small handful of people I actually spoke to as I was contemplating this offline, but we had spoken on air before. I was a businessman and I consider myself a businessman now and I'm thinking about what I'm going to do in the future, trying to drive change through the private sector. I founded a biotech company that challenged a lot of the way big pharma did business. I founded Strive to challenge the way BlackRock and the ESG promoting asset managers were functioning. And those were successes in their own right in different ways. But I realized the mother of the beast in each of those cases and in so many other cases of problems I hadn't tackled was the administrative state, was that fourth branch of government, the bureaucracy, the technocracy, the people who are never elected to run the government that were actually exercising political power. You could take the FDA as an example in the shadow of the pharmaceutical industry, which I had seen firsthand. And the not only the illogical policies, if illogic were the only part of it, it would have been a technically solvable problem. It was a fundamentally political problem where people were exercising political power that they were never given. Same thing with respect to the EPA and the SEC in the case of the asset management industry. And so I came to the conclusion, look, life is short. One of the best pieces of advice I got as a younger man was it takes about as much effort 
and difficulty to do something small as it does to do something big. And I've found over the course of my career that that's been about true. I've done some smaller things. I've done some bigger things, both of which are important. But they take about the same effort if you're doing something well, whether it's something really small or something really large. The amount of individual effort you put in is about the same. And so, look, I said, what is the biggest possible impact I can have? If I'm willing to put all my effort into it, it might as well be the biggest possible impact of all. Let me lead the United States of America. Let me lead the United States of America to a rediscovery of our national ideals. Take on that administrative state, that fourth branch of government. Dismantle it to revive, in many ways, the ideals of the American Revolution. I mean, that's what the American Revolution was about. In 1776, we said no to elite technocracy in the form of monarchy. It's a 1776 moment now. Young people did it back then. I was 37 years old when I declared, and most people said that's too young to run for president. The truth is I found that as encouragement because our founding fathers, including Thomas Jefferson, were younger than me in many cases at the time they created the entire country. So that's where I was. I jumped off a cliff and didn't know what exactly was going was to be my landing pad on the other side. Let's just say I learned a lot over the course of that last year. And, you know, God's plan was revealed. It was not meant to be the next president of the United States, it seems. But it did take me on a journey that at least I learned a lot from, I took a lot away from, and hopefully sets me up to continue to have a big impact in other ways in the future. It just was originally my motivation. Now, a couple of things I learned. I assumed that it was going to be a message that people were hungry for. I knew people were hungry for this message. I had written three books. I had traveled the country. I had been to most states in this union as a consequence of my business activities across the books I had written. And so I knew how people were responding to this message. I thought of running for president in part because many people on those book tours, you know, tens, hundreds of people even who I didn't know come and encourage me to run for U.S. president. I didn't have much of a doubt in my mind that that message was going to resonate with a lot of people. But what I naively assumed was that somehow that message was going to land on the ears of the millions of people who needed to hear it. And A, that they were going to hear it at all. And B, that when they did hear it, that was the only thing they were going to hear versus a lot of other messages about me that would permeate the system. And it turned out to be a, a much more challenging initial incline than I had envisioned. The first thing I noticed was uh, we planned a you know, a big launch of the presidential campaign, a video. I had a Wall Street Journal op-ed. Probably, I'm not saying this to boast, but one of the things that I did was probably one of the most thorough policy vision rollouts of a presidential candidate on day one when they roll out their campaign. Thought I had done it the right way. We went pretty quickly. I only decided in January of 2023 to run. I declared by the end of February 2024. It was February 21st when I declared. And we had a big lead up to it. I think I had done everything exactly as I had planned to do, laid out the message about as well as I wanted to. And then I noticed that <laughs> the world continued to proceed as though I had never launched my run for U.S. president, including even the battle, which I was ended up being uh, 